Hi, I'm Tara Crank and this is Koi Tlail's most extreme nature watch. In this episode, we're going to be tracking down one of the most extreme organisms on the planet. Some of them can be up to 2.4 miles long and others small enough that they can't be seen by the human eye. This is extreme fungi. All living things are split into five kingdoms. Plants and animals are two of these, and fungi fall into neither of those categories. Fungi are neither plants nor animals, they have their own kingdom. And that contains 120,000 known species. And it's estimated that there are 5.1 million species of fungi worldwide. That means we're only aware of 2.4% of the species in the world. Today we're looking for macromycetes, the larger fungi that are more likely to be seen in the woodlands near you. What is a fungus? A fungus is made up of hyphae, just like plants are made up of cells. Hyphae are thin tubes that grow into a complex mesh that is called the mycelium. The mycelium is the body of the fungus. What's the difference between a fungus and a mushroom? Well, a mushroom is the fruiting body of the fungus. That's the part that creates the spores so it can reproduce. The mushroom is a part of the fungus that will live for maybe a few days, but the rest of the fungus, the mycelium, its body will live on. Some can live a hundred years. If you want to find fungi, you've got to know where to look. Often fungi have a specific association with a specific plant. Let's go and find some of them. We look at the bases of trees, we're looking on dead wood, sometimes in fields and... Oh, it's feeling a bit... it's a bit creepy over here. Come on, come on. This is dead man's fingers. It looks like someone's trying to escape the ground. It can grow up to eight centimetres tall. You can find it clawing its way out of the undergrowth on buried dead wood, surrounded by moss. This fungus is saprobic, meaning it consumes the polysaccharides in the timber, making it soft and nutrient rich for invertebrates to eat. It has what looks like a thin stem that joins the mushroom to the mycelium underneath. This fungus is called King Alfred's Cake. It feeds off dying ash trees and when dried it can be useful for fire lighting as a tinder. King Alfred's Cakes are strikingly jet black. They have a rounded outside with inner concentric rings. Look for them in deciduous woodlands where there's an abundance of ash trees. Candle snuff fungus. As its name suggests, candle snuff fungus looks like a snuffed out candle with a white tip, a grey middle and a black base. It can be seen pushing its way through woodland mosses, particularly in log piles in deciduous woodlands. What you can see now is the fruiting body, the mushroom. This is a clever fungus that reproduces sexually and asexually. What you can see on the top, the white parts, the powdery parts, are asexual spores. It has powerful antiviral properties and can be shown to be active against cancerous tumours. Oh, look at this turkey tail fungus. Turkey tail has the Latin name versicolor which describes its different colours. Look at those reds, browns. 
edges of white and white underneath. It's a bracket fungus, which describes its shape like a bracket. Turkey tail has been used to stimulate the immune system and has even been used to combat cancer. Look at that. This is a lichenized fungus. That means this fungus is living in partnership with either an alga or a cyanobacterium. Whoa, watch out there. 70% of fungi that are trampled are less likely to put out fruiting bodies, mushrooms. So watch your step as you come in. Here we have the deceiver. The deceiver is named that because it changes in appearance. It often looks quite different. The deceiver has a pinky brown colour that pales when it's dry. It has a grainy texture on its top with striations around the outside. Sometimes it has a depression in the centre and the stem can look a bit flattened. It tends to grow in large troops. You can find this one growing out of forest floors, pushing its way through decaying leaves. It's a mycorrhizal fungus, so you'll see the mushrooms popping up around the root systems of trees like pine, beech and others. These differences in colour and shape make it true to its name, the deceiver. Fungi are essential for all life as we know it. They are responsible for the decay and recycling of all nutrients, just like these stumps you can see here. The fungi on here will secrete enzymes and acids that will break down the tissues. It's like digesting them from the outside. Once they're digested, the hyphae take in the nutrients to use for respiration and for growth. The hyphae can grow at a rate of 2.4 millimetres every hour. The strength of this continual growth, combined with the enzymes and the acid, can break through lignin and even rock. Eighty percent of our plants need fungi to live, including trees. Trees form a mycorrhizal relationship with fungi. That just means their roots are covered in a network of the tubes that make up the fungus. They help take up nutrients so the plant can store carbohydrates. They harbour helpful bacteria and they even help the trees to communicate with each other. Without our fungi, we'd be surrounded by rotting corpses that would never break down. Our fungi are essential in the recycling of the nutrients inside them too, so that new life can grow. Not only this, they're used in medicine and food. They're collected in 80 countries for food, so they're great for the economy too. 100 of our British fungi are at risk of population decline. You can help by going on adventures like this to find fungi and recording what you find on the iRecord app. If you have a garden, log piles like this one are a no maintenance addition that provides fungal habitat as well as insect habitat and places to shelter for creatures hibernating over the winter. You can also help by learning more, which you've already done by watching this video. Thanks for watching, I'm Tara Crank and if you want to see more like this check out the rest of the Koi Tlail channel. It's epic. Give it a like and subscribe.